The aim of this lecture is to define supply chain and supply chain management and to illustrate the typical supply chain configuration in the fashion sector. A supply chain, or SC for shorten, can be described as the set of activities that allow the transformation of raw materials into finished products, passing across suppliers, manufacturers, distributors and companies with other roles. This definition hints at some important concepts, in particular the concepts of production process, that is, the transformation of raw materials into products, economic goods. The fact that along the supply chain we have three types of transformation, matter, physical transformation, time and space. And the fact that the supply chain encompasses several main actors, the brand owner, manufacturer, which in general is either the brand owner or a licensee, raw material suppliers, the companies in charge of the raw material transformation, the distributor and the retailers. Let's now see some alternative definition of supply chain, useful to better understand the concept. Cox identifies the supply chain as the set of functions within and outside a company that enable the value chain to manufacture products and provide services to the customer. The Supply Chain Council stated that the supply chain encompasses every effort involved in producing and delivering a final product from the supplier's supplier to the customer's customer. Childerhouse speaks of demand chain in order to highlight a customer orientation. The whole manufacturing and distribution process may be viewed as a sequence of events with one purpose, to serve the ultimate customer. These are just some of the definitions that were provided for one of the most explored management concepts of the recent years. Dealing with supply chains is now a necessity dictated by the evolutions of the economic scenario. Neither fashion nor luxury companies were immune to the major economic trends that characterized the last decades. Globalization of markets, development of potential competitors worldwide, thus further increasing the complexity of the context, evolution of consumers towards the demand for higher variety, customized products, high quality and high service level, thus making the market more unpredictable. To concentrate their efforts, companies often decided to focus on a limited set of core competencies, leading, on turn, to a dramatic increase in outsourcing. Therefore, as firms no longer owned the whole set of necessary assets to cover all the manufacturing and distribution processes, there was only one way to satisfy more demanding and sophisticated customers on the one hand and, on the other hand, shareholders' interests. Pursuing coordination or collaboration with partners such as suppliers, customers and third-party service providers in order to direct efforts towards a common objective. These are some of the reasons why supply chains gain so much interest from managers, academicians and practitioners in the traditional field of operations management and logistics. And supply chain management, which can be defined as the integration of key business processes from end user through original suppliers that provides products, services and information that add value for customer and other stakeholders, emerged as fundamental in order to remain competitive in a context where most activities are outsourced and the interaction of multiple actors is critical to ensure the delivery of products to the customer. A common approach to describe a supply chain consists in listing the business processes across it, 
The process is, beyond the physical operation required for making the product themselves, represent the way along which products are conceived and flow towards the end customers. Normally, various actors along the supply chain, that is, suppliers, outsourcers, third-party logistics providers, retail partners, and so on, take part in these processes and in this way they can contribute positively or negatively to the alignment of the supply chain towards the key requests of the market, the so-called critical success factors, or CSF. According to the Supply Chain Council, four basic processes, namely plan, source, make and deliver, broadly define these efforts, which include managing supply and demand, sourcing raw materials and parts, manufacturing and assembling, warehousing and inventory tracking, order entry and order management, distribution across all channels and delivery to the customer. This is the so-called Supply Chain Operations Reference Model, or SCORE. However, many authors propose their view for identifying more precisely the processes within a supply chain. One of the most recognized models is provided by Lambert and Cooper. They identify eight business processes, namely customer relationship management, customer service management, demand management, order fulfillment, manufacturing flow management, procurement, product development and commercialization, and returns. In recent years, several important companies of the fashion industry have launched large reorganization projects aiming at restructuring their supply chains. These companies are devoting more and more efforts to enhance their own and their partners' operations efficiency and to increase the alignment of the whole supply chain towards the critical success factors for competing in their market. For sure, this can be considered the offspring of a process that is taking back managers from an exaggerated attention to brands towards reconsidering product and distribution related aspects. Now that we have introduced the concept and relevance of supply chain and supply chain management, it is important to briefly discuss the typical structure of both the upstream supply chain, how raw materials are flowing towards the manufacturing sites, and the downstream channel, how end products are distributed to the final consumer in the fashion sector, with the standpoint of the brand owner, or BO. The typical structure of the inbound supply chain encompasses suppliers of raw materials, suppliers of components and finished goods, and sub-suppliers. In comparison with other industries, such as the aerospace or automotive, the idiosyncrasies of such a configuration are a sign of a quite naive SC strategy and, if not properly managed, could become a relevant issue threatening the overall supply chain performances. High fragmentation of the production system with a plethora of actors each one taking care of a tiny little part of the overall process. Captive relations with subcontractors, often working for the BO as their sole customer. Lack of formalized written agreements, let alone long-term contracts. Outsourcing of some design activities to finished product suppliers. This is not an issue, provided that this practice is limited to extension lines and lower positioning products. Customized raw materials. This is a strength for higher positioned luxury products. Yet, customized materials require proper and careful production planning and inventory management. 
The typical structure of the outbound supply chain encompasses the two not worthy cases of directly operated stores or DOS and independent trade including a gamut of retail formats from standalone shops to department stores and the possibility that the relationship between the brand owner and the stores are mediated by a distributor. Ownership and control of the trade, along with the duration of the product life cycle, are significantly influencing management choices in the outbound supply chain, in terms of IT tools, assortment planning, demand forecasting, approach towards replenishment, and so on. Understanding the typical structure of the upstream and downstream fashion supply chain is important, as in the following lectures we will discuss the specific choices of fashion brands in terms of how to organize the processes and activities of the supply chain.